So if you're using cloud variables, sometimes it can be hard to kind of see the data behind there. I'm doing that in this app called Send That, where we can transfer text. Do that, it gives us a code. And then if we come and click receive and type in this code, it gives us this text. And I can do that on any of any of my apps for send that so it's cross-platform and the way we do that is through cloud variables inside of thunkable but whenever you're debugging and something's going wrong a lot of times it's it's, it's really helpful to see kind of what's happening in the background right now since i'm using the plain old cloud variables inside of thunkable there's really no way for me to to see that but in fact there is and we can actually hook up this this project to look at uh, my own Firebase real-time database so that I can control my data, I can see it, I can edit it, and all that good stuff. So yeah, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to hook up your existing cloud variables to your own Firebase database. Enough of the introductions, let's get into the video. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is come to, uh, I assume you have a Google account. Most people do if they're using Thunkable. You basically just go to type in Firebase and eventually you'll get to a page that looks like this. And we'll go ahead and start a new project. So we'll call this the send that demo, not P. And we'll just continue and continue through all this good stuff. And we'll use my default account and it'll create the project. And sometimes this takes a little bit and now we can continue. All right, so now we have a Firebase project and Firebase is a service and it has things for authenticating users, storing data, storing files and, and images hosting your website, running background tasks, and doing a whole lot of other stuff that is really cool with your apps. But really the thing that we want to use right now is a database. So I can click on database, and since I don't have anything created, I can come and create one. And kind of the flagship database right now is Cloud Firestore, but Thunkable actually integrates with another Firebase database, which is called the real-time database, which you can find uh, currently down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this new real-time database. And I'm gonna start in test mode. And this basically just means there's no authentication needed to write to this database. Anybody can do it. And now we have this database. What I can do is I need two things from Firebase in order to send stuff here. The first is this database URL, which you can find right here. So if I click on that, copy that, and then in back in my app, I'm gonna come to the kind of main screen for the app and then scroll down to my Firebase settings down here. And what I just copied is my database URL. So now there's another thing we need, which is the API key. So we can come back to Firebase, and come to our this little cog up here next to project overview and go to project settings. Come back to Thunkable and paste that in there. And boom, now our Thunkable app is going to start sending data to our Firebase project. So let me grab this database URL here. We'll copy that and open up a new tab. And that should open us right up to that brand spanking new database. So now let's actually see if this thing works. Let's actually send some data to it. So I'm gonna come to my demo app over here and I'll click the start. And now I can send something. We'll just say, hello there, Firebase. And press send. And then boom, now you can see we just sent something to Firebase. And so now I can come to the web app and enter in this code, 939009. So I'll come to receive and I'll type in 939009, receive, and boom, here is the text that I just entered. So very, very cool that we can now communicate with Firebase without needing to use what I have previously taught, which is the real-time database. So 
this component is not being used in our app. All we're using are these cloud uh, variables in the app. But that is not to say that you cannot do the same thing with a real-time database. So like if I was to just throw in this real-time database component and then come to my blocks, this right here is exactly the same thing. And I'll show you this real quick. If we were to, in the real-time database, save, the key for what we're saving is app code, and the value we're saving is uh, this save input. And so what we just had is the same thing as, as doing this. So let me click to start and I'll say something new. Uh, we'll just say trees are green and we'll send. And so boom, there it sends the same thing. So the cloud variables are effectively the same thing as communicating through the real time database component but it's a lot easier in some cases. So that's why I used it for this app because I had a really simple case and that my friends is how you can connect your apps cloud variables to your own Firebase project so that you can see what people are entering and also do some debugging yourself troubleshooting rather if you don't know the term debugging. So we have built this complete send that app. I've shown you how I created it from start to finish. And in the next two videos, I'm going to get into publishing as mobile apps and publishing as the web app, just walking you through those processes. So thank you, my friend, for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to share a like with me and I will really appreciate that. It helps out the channel and I will see you in the next one. Happy coding.